All right, hello and welcome to my Blue Red Zombies video. Uh, this is our deck tech. Uh, let's just talk about this deck a little bit. So, uh, backstory of this deck, uh, Grand Prix Denver last year, uh, I believe, I forget, his, I remember his first name, Andrew, I forget his full name, but he top forward the Grand Prix with this kind of brew. Like, we've seen Blue Red Zombies at some, some people playing at Pro Tours and stuff, um, just kind of the the weird, like, zombie deck that instead of playing Grixis or instead of playing uh, Black to hardcast your amalgams, you just don't bother. And he top four the Grand Prix with a Fever Divisions list, which was something that I hadn't really seen before. Uh, I actually played against him in top four and beat him with Marvel. It didn't actually feel like a great matchup, but I did escape with the win, and pretty much uh, going into Grand Prix Pittsburgh this week, I feel as if uh, there's going to be a lot of green-black, and I, we tested this deck for the Pro Tour, and the problem with this deck was it was pretty solid, it was really good against Green Black, like it's really hard to lose against Green Black, uh, you just blow up all their stuff, they don't actually have removal that kills Deep Fiend, they have Fatal Pushes and Grasps, which don't really interact that well against your uh, Stitch Wing creatures, and all in all it's really tough for them, but, you know, we played this deck against Jess Guy, and just main deck negates, main deck disallow which can you know counter your stitch wing abilities and whatnot like you know and also them just having Sahili combo is a big problem um so uh i just we kind of scrapped the deck we didn't actually really test it much against mardu because you know we ended up playing mardu but we didn't think mardu would be that big but it makes sense because it was like the one of the decks that could beat Jeskai consistently um so anyway here is the deck uh, I think it's pretty well positioned this week because we're going to see a lot of green-black and a lot of Mardu vehicles and Jeskai mages are probably going to stay stay at home be or play a different deck because of all the Mardu they expect. Um, so anyway, we have the mana base. It's one Highland Lake, uh, which is, you know, a card that looks bad, but in this deck... You are, even though you're only two colors, you're super color hungry. Essentially, you have turns where you want to have Tormenting Voice plus Fiery Temper. You want Lightning Ash plus Fiery Temper, so you want double red, but you also have four Deep Fiends, which the deck kind of runs through. And, you know, it's a lot harder to win a deck in a game where you don't draw double blue. So I think the one Highland Lake is actually pretty legit. Uh, just because there's a lot of times when you mull with this deck because you need like a Tormenting Voice, Cathartic Reunion, or a Lightning Axe a lot of the times, plus. A stitch wing to get started, you mog into six and five a lot, and in those kind of hands, like dual lands are so important because you end up keeping these like one land hands with like island or mountain missing a color, you know, and Highland Lake really helps alleviate that stress. So we have six islands, six mountains, pretty even on the colors, nothing special. Two Sanctum of Ugans. This card is insanely good. I uh, wish you could play more, but the mana base just doesn't really support it. Uh, you can get greedy and cut the Highland Lake, but I've liked the Highland Lake. And Sanctum just lets you chain Deep Fiends together. And this deck is absurd with Deep Fiend. There are so many games where your opponent just can't really interact with the Deep Fiend chain. Um, mostly because, you know, you have the ability to tap tap down all their stuff. You have Wandering Fumeral. You have Burn Spells. You know, you, you can go upstairs. It's really easy to finish your opponent off if you Deep Fiend them twice in a row. And you can pretty much just every turn bring back a Stitch Wing card, which is really nice. So Sanctum, really good. Gives the deck some... In Increased power. Force Fire Buff Canals, obviously insane. Just, it's just your Volcanic Island, basically. Fumarole, your other dual land. Like, obviously, five tap lands is, is a decent number, but a lot of the times you're not doing anything on turn one, so it doesn't really matter. Fumarole is unbelievable in this deck. Like, in Jeskai, you don't activate it. In this deck, you activate it all the time, because you get into spots where you're pretty much hellbent. Like, you discard your entire hand to get everything in play, so you're just playing with what you have on board, which might be, like, an Amalgam or two, and a Stitch Wing Scab, and you can just activate your Fumarole, attack with everything, attack with everything, or tap them down, get the extra 4 damage from Fumarole. Very good. A uh, 3 Lightning Axe. Lightning Axe is so good in this format right now. Like, the ability to... I almost wish there were more Mountains, because a lot of the times, if you're on the draw, you want to be able to kill a Toolcraft Exemplar, you want to be able to kill a Wine and Constrictor, and also discard a Stitchwing Scab, but it's a really good discard outlet. Uh, pretty solid against every deck, because like the, even the control decks are playing uh, a Sahili combo, and this is a one-mana way of destroying that Felidar Guardian. A lot of times they go for it, and you have it. Super brutal. Plays really well with the deck. All in all, awesome card. Uh, for Cathartic Reunion, you know, we, we see Dredge in Modern, like, once this card was printed, the deck's absurd. This is the reason the deck exists. 
Very absurd. Let's you pitch two cards in your graveyard that you want in the graveyard anyway, and you draw three. Very strong. Three Tormenting Voice, a little bit worse, so we're playing a 4-3 split. Um, pretty pretty happy with Tormenting Voice. Like, let's you get the chain started. Not not nearly as powerful, but it's a little bit better against Counter Magic if you end up playing against a Jeskai deck and you end up boarding out Cathartic Reunions. Okay, four Kozik's Return. Uh, this is kind of why... I, there's a lot of cards that make the deck, but Kozik's Return m makes it good in this metagame right now. I think it's quite strong against Green-Black, and it's pretty solid against Mardu. Just cleans up their board, and then when you cast an Elder Deep Fiend, lets you instant speed deal five to everything, which just... Green-Black can basically never beat that unless they have resolved like a Gearhulk or something. And Mardu, that kills everything, obviously, so Kozik's Return, pretty solid. Uh, three Fiery Tempers. This is your removal spell, like, outside Lightning Axe. It's really nice because, you know, a lot of the times you are just spending your turns discarding cards to Lightning Axe, Stitchwing Scab, or Advanced Stitchwing. Uh, this is a, oftentimes you're kind of not... If you guys understand, like, a Necro Lock, you're kind of Stitchwing Locked, where, like, every other turn you're returning your Stitchwing. Fiery Temper, you know, along with Amalgam, are great draws in these scenarios because it actually gives you a spell. Like, I'm committed to returning my Stitchwing, but if I draw a Fiery Temper, I get a free Lightning Bolt out of the deal, uh, which is really nice. Um, so, Fiery Temper, very solid. Prized Amalgam, you know, th it is it is what it is. This is, if you guys have seen my Zombies videos, like, games where you draw two Prized Amalgams are really hard to lose. Uh, games where you don't draw any are kind of can be kind of tough to win. I think this deck does a better job at winning without Amalgam than like my Zombies decks of the past did because you have Kozix Return plus Deep Fiend to Wrath them. You have Fevered Visions to kind of draw extra cards. You know, you have Cathartic Reunion to find the Amalgam. So I do like the Amalgams a lot. Uh, four Fevered Visions looks bad, but this card is really good. Like even, even against aggressive decks like Green Black. Not so much Mardu, but... You drawing extras just gives you so much utility. Like, the ability to return Stitch Wings as much as you want, because you have two cards to turn instead of one, is really nice. Drawing into your cheap interaction, like Fire Temper and Lightning Axe, is really good. Just drawing into extra copies of Deep Fiend while dealing them damage. Like, if you deal them six damage with Fever Visions, you can very easily, like, Deep Fiend them, Wandering Fumeroll, kill you. You know, it comes up a lot. This softens them up, gives you extra cards. Really, really strong card, all in all. Stitch Wing cards, you know, really good. Uh, Stitch Wing Scab is cost less, so it's kind of interchangeable which one's better. It does die to, like, Shock and Walking Ballista, which makes it a lot worse. Sometimes against Walking Ballista's deck, I actually bore one out. But, you know, it does let you essentially discard. Make sure if you have Amalgams, you know, you're discarding on their end of their main phase, so you can get the Amalgam back. Also lets you utilize Fiery Temper, lets you get uh, Prize Amalgams or other Stitchwing cards into the yard. Advanced Stitchwing, you know, similar thing. A little bit bigger. Uh, makes one less mana, like, it costs five on the hard cast, which doesn't happen that often, but means your deep fiends cost one less. Elder Deep Fiend, you know, another card. Like, it's so funny how so many of these cards... Like, if you banned anyone, or if one of these cards wasn't printed, the entire deck would be unplayable, which is kind of funny, but Elder Deep Fiend, you know, very solid. Give makes Let's you win against Control. Let's you kind of take over games against Aggro. Gives you instant speed Kozlik's return. Does everything you want it to do. Uh, it does, has a lot of utility, so if you watch the videos, you can kind of see me utilizing it um and let's go to the sideboard uh one lightning axe uh extra lightning axe is just very if you play against mardu essentially if you play against mardu or against um green black you want to board in the extra lightning axe uh i don't love it main deck because i think part of game one you want more tormenting voices you want more cards that draw you extras so that you can find your pieces lightning axe is solid but only if you're against a creature deck if you play against a pure control deck they don't even play any creatures, so it doesn't even act as a discard outlet, so you don't want to risk having too many. Two Dispels, uh, the, 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 excuse me, the control matchup is just very weak, and you have a lot of cards that are bad, like Kozik's Return and Fiery Temper, so you just have a, a lot of counter spells in your sideboard. Uh, that way, you can actually interact. Like Part of the problem is they counter or disallow your enablers, and with Negates and Dispels, you can actually resolve them. Pretty good, you know, not the best. Negate also has some utility, like it counters Marvel, counters Sahili, which can be nice. Uh, just kind of in there, this, if you watch the, the sideboarding of this deck, you don't actually sideboard very much, which is kind of nice. Two Key of the Cities. Now, this is kind of a weird card, but when you play against Blue Red Control or Jeskai Control, they have so many counter spells that you just can't have Cathartic Reunion in your deck. So essentially what you do is you side out the Cathartic Reunions for Key. If they counter the Key, you're not down several cards. It kind of is awkward because... 
you don't when you play the reunion you guarantee getting the cards in your sideboard but it's so hard to win when reunion gets negated because you just have so few resources after that and key late game draws you cards sometimes which can be pretty nice you know to filter uh, extra fiery temper this is for any creature deck same thing as before you don't want it main deck like when you're on the draw and you're cutting future visions against the aggressive decks like more copies of removal are really good on uh, nahiri's wrath this is a card that's kind of questionable for me because it's either really bad or really good i think that it's really good against the gideon decks because it gives you the ability to remove a gideon from play part of the problem with it though is i find that i find that not often like you might have to discard a deep fiend to kill what you want uh ideally you want like stitch wing so you can deal five divided plus whatever else you discard but it does cost you a lot of cards, and maybe two is too many, but it it's been it was pretty good for me a few times. A uh, two wretched Griff, kind of weird for a card like this to be in the side, we're not the main deck. Essentially, this is for green black because against green black, you don't mind main phasing your Kozak's returns. You just want as many ways as possible to flashback their return because once you flashback their return, removing their threats, it is kind of hard for them to win at that point. And the other thing is they have lost legacy plus transgress the mind, so they can get your deep fiends exile from your deck. And because of that, I kind of like Wretched Griff uh, just as kind of a security measure against that. Three release the Gremlins. I'll tell you right now, I'm feeling a lot of times I film the deck text after I do the league, which is the case this time. And three release the Gremlins is just too many. I don't really know exactly what else you want in your sideboard, but I found against Mardu that it's not that great. It's fine. I think maybe you want one or two. But it's not like you're getting into situations where it's going to be a blowout or anything. Um, probably strong enough to have one. Maybe strong enough to have two. Three is just way too many. Especially in a deck like this where you have so many other cards you want to board in. Where you just can't really take out enough cards. Uh, so that's the deck. Uh, tune in for the matches for sure. Have a very good spread of matches. If you're playing in competitive events, um, I play against all competitive decks today and I do pretty well. So if you're interested in the zombie deck at all, take a look at the matches and the article. Thank you for tuning in, of course, and I'll see you guys for round one.